Well, how's it going, guys? Welcome back to another Saturday video here. Um, no will it run today. Um, we're just going to look at this uh, 1964 Pontiac Catalina that we've had since not last year, doing quite a bit of work to it. I just want to do a little short uh, kind of walk around video and I'll kind of show you what we've done. Uh, I'll try to enter, insert some clips and little video clips from last year when we got it running uh, originally. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned and, uh, thanks for watching. Yeah. So when this, uh, when this car came in and been sitting and off the road, I believe, I think it's 2008. We'll confirm that in the back, but, uh, it had been moved around and stored in different places outside, inside and whatnot. So, um, we got this, this uh, vehicle through a different, uh, another customer that we got that is, uh, that's related to this guy. Um, this is a 389, uh, Pontiac 389. Um, it doesn't have the original transmission. It's got a turbo 400 in it now, or it had when we, when the car came to us, it had a turbo 400 in it. Um, since we pulled the whole entire engine apart, smoked pretty bad. And I'll, uh, insert a clip right here. A little bit of smoke. Runs good. Runs real good. Definitely cloudy. That's the marvel. So, as you can see, it's uh, it uh, smoked pretty bad when we got it. Uh, the rings were pretty tired on it. They didn't want to snap back to the. We were running around, got it, a bunch of heat cycles through it. The rings just weren't coming back. So we pulled it apart. There was nothing wrong with it. And um, went ahead and just freshened it up. All new gaskets, bearings, check all the clearances. Everything was fine. Uh, the new springs, you know, everything. And if you know anything about these Pontiacs, the, it doesn't have umbrella seats on the valves. It's got O-rings. So eh, I'm not really a fan of those. Uh, but they don't. There's a way you could switch it over to the umbrellas, but you're going to do it, you know, probably a thousand dollars worth of machine work just to put the umbrella heads on it or you know machine it for the umbrellas it just wasn't uh i didn't think it was worth it no rings should be fine i mean even if it smokes just a little bit but uh, yeah i don't know if you can really see around you can kind of see um if you look really close in the last little clip that i showed <laughs> it's got a little bit different wiring on it um this has got uh sniper EFI on it, and uh, so it's still in its trial phase for me, trying to get it figured out, dialed in. It's not my forte, really, just because I'm not a I'm a carburetor guy. I haven't messed with them. I'm sure they're fine. I just need to I need to mess with them a little bit more. So uh, we'll get down that road and get this thing dialed in, and um, it'll run just fine. I know it. Um, so yeah, we got an aluminum radiator in here. We didn't want any overheating issues. Uh, one wire alternator got rid of the, all the stuff on the firewall, the old, the old style. Um, I think underneath here, that's pretty much all we did. Let me get you a little closer on some of this other stuff over here. I'll do a little handheld action here and show you uh, kind of where we hid everything else. So, so. <clears throat> You can kind of see all the relays and stuff. And this has got the hypers part. So I bought, bought the whole kit. So it's distributor, coil, uh, EC, or, you know, the throttle body, ECU, and the, uh, the control box for the ignition. And we wanted to hide it. You can see the plug way down there at the bottom. Right there. Um, so we hid it under the battery. You know, this isn't going to be probably a daily driver car. So some people said the battery acid might destroy that box I doubt it in the time that I mean you could always put a seal top battery on it and get rid of that lead acid battery so uh, other than that yeah we had a little couple little things we moved the coil and we'll still tidy up some wires and make it look a little bit better but uh, all in all it's on a bag rig rig and uh, we'll uh, let's see we'll go to the back and we'll uh, kind of discuss some of the other stuff we've done in there. I'll, well, I'll take you inside out that. I'll take you inside and show you where we put the screen for the sniper. 
Well, here we are in the cockpit. So, as you can see, we didn't we didn't really do anything in this. It's a pretty decent car, really. Um, a couple little things, but nothing crazy, you know. But if you know anything about the sniper stuff, there's a screen that kind of control. Well, it doesn't really control everything, but you can monitor all the stuff. And this customer really didn't want the screen, you know, mounted anywhere on the outside. And I don't blame him. I probably would have done the same thing. But we still want to be able to access it and, you know, and uh, be able to see the vitals and stuff. But, you know. Some would be like, where in the world did they put that thing? It's it's in here. It's going to be in here. Nope. There's no flip down. You put it in the glove box. Boop. There you go. You can see it right there. So, it's hidden. And uh, it's got a little mounting bracket. So, you can, if you're going down the road and you're like, man, this thing seems hot because this does not have. Coolant temp gauge is just got the idiot light. That's what I call it. But uh, we um, went ahead and uh, so yeah, that's got all the temp and stuff in it. Uh, no oil pressure, but the light's still on this one for oil pressure. So okay, so yeah, and here there's really not a whole lot to go over. So uh, yeah, we'll uh, I'm gonna move you on to the next thing. I'm gonna have to run the light at the same time. So <laughs> um, yeah, we're I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little bit of a uh, little rust coming through there. A little rust coming through here, you know. Probably pretty typical on these cars. I'm not really familiar with the Pontiacs, but, um, you know, got a lot of rust on the deck lid, like, which we have off because we're going to take care of all this rust. Some would call it patina, but it's rust. <laughs> Um, we're going to take care of all that rust and we've already started on some of the rust here. So we got a couple wheel wells patched up. They don't make any panels, at least not that I could find for these. Not even, not even the lower for the front. So, um, yeah, let's see. What else? Yeah, so let me get my light on. You probably notice that too. It's got a different master cylinder. It's got a disc. So we the front was already converted when we when it was when it came to us. But you can't see it, but you have to believe me because it's in there. <laughs> it's got uh, rear disc brakes. So it's got four wheel discs all the way around. Um, just kind of a a neat, uh, a neat deal. Oh, yeah, there you go. Date. It was off the road since 2005. So I'll try to insert a few clips of us running it when it was, when it was, uh, before we redid the engine and all that stuff. So, <clears throat> but yeah, no, I think, uh, that's, there's not a whole lot really about this vehicle, <laughs> you know. There's not, we didn't go crazy. It's not a custom or anything. I mean, underneath the hood, short of the air cleaner, there's not much different here. So, uh, yeah, if I can think of anything else, I'll, I'll add it in there for sure. But, um, yeah, other than that, maybe once we get it started and stuff, we'll and move it around and just got the brakes bled and the parking brakes put on. So, um, we'll drive, you know, see if we can't drive it around our lot here test the brakes and make sure they work and you know whatnot but uh yeah so if i think of anything else i'll come back and uh let you know but uh yeah it's pretty cool got some pretty cool body lines you know a little bump out over the rear end there and then, you know to the old custom here it's just a little bit newer <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Just a little bit of smoke. Just a little bit. Okay, well, got him back into the shop and things escalated quite quickly. We ran it for a while. It was smoking a little bit. 
and uh, we tried to <clears throat> do a bunch of heat cycles and sea foam and whatnot to try to see if we can't get the smoke to come down, but it just would not come down. It just kept smoking, and the warmer it got, it the worse it got. So talked to the client, customer, and he said, pull it out and rebuild it. So that's what we're doing is pulling it out and redoing it. Gonna do some other pretty cool stuff, so stay tuned. This thing's gonna be pretty sweet when it's done. Pretty sweet. I'm back on the Pontiac 389. Got its first round of honing. Probably do one more round on it. One little scratch spot right there, but it'll come out. This thing's about ready to go back together. It's good because the parts for this thing take up everything in the shop. On the floor, over here tore apart. No. yeah there you go uh there's a little bit of a sneak peek on the the old catalina um pretty uh pretty neat little car there'll be some more on it i'm sure when we start driving it start messing with the sniper thing we'll kind of show you i'll go through i know we got some videos we'll, be, we'll definitely make a part two on this one i got video somewhere else i know nate has some videos on this too uh i'll have to just look and see what i got I know we had some originally from driving it around, and uh, I know Nate's moved it before we did the rear brakes and stuff after we got the exhaust, and it's definitely got a lot more than it had before. So, um, yeah, so I want to thank you guys for watching. Another shorty, but uh, I don't have a lot this week. I'll be gone all week, so it's the only day in the shop this Monday. So you guys have a good week. Don't forget to love your neighbor like you love yourself. If we do more of that, this world will be a better place. We'll catch you later.